What are you doing here? I was looking for you. The nurse said you were doing your rounds. Yes, I'm just about done, actually. Okay, good. Would you like to join me for dinner and go over these uh, foundation papers? Oh. Well, dinner? Today. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I want to go over those. All right, well, that settles it. I'll make reservations. Okay? You know what? I can't leave the hospital. There's a patient I want to keep an eye on. Hey, I got your message that you called. Wanted to see me. Hi, Edmund. Hi. How are you? I I hope I'm not interrupting anything. I'm not. No, 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 no. No, no. We were just uh, talking about food. cafeteria food. Yes. Yeah, I'll sorry. see if he can bring us back something uh, edible. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Hi. Hi. You didn't need to rush over here. I no, no, I didn't. I, I was already in the hospital, actually. I'm doing a report on an adoption story. Oh. I was very pleased, though, that you called. Uh, even encouraged. Oh, it's not about me. Ah. Uh. No. <laughs> He's a patient of mine, little girl. Oh. She suddenly stopped speaking, and I, I can't find anything neurological or physical that's wrong with her, so I think it's psychological. So you're calling me in for a consultation? Yeah. I think that she would feel comfortable with you. Hmm. Whatever it is, we're going to have to approach it carefully because she seems so traumatized. I have a feeling that there might be abuse in the family. Ah, well, you know, that is always a possibility. Yeah. What do you think? Where is she? <gasps> Great, she's right in there. I can read these books. Hang on a second. Hi, sweetie. Hi, this is a friend of mine. This is Dr. Cummings. Oh, Ray. Ray, this is Karen. Hello, Karen. So Ray has her own radio show. Isn't that cool? Ta-da! <laughs> yeah. People call up and they talk to her about their problems. And then when she's not on the radio, she talks to people person to person. And that way they can tell her what's really bothering them. You know, sort of talk about the private things that they wouldn't like anyone else to hear. I know, sweetheart, sometimes these things are very frightening to talk about at first. But you're safe here. You have no reason to feel afraid. You can talk about anything you want. Anything at all. So now, I had these books in my office, and I just love them. I love looking at pictures of other countries, don't you? You know what? So do I. Yeah? Yeah, it gives me an idea of all the places that I might get to go to one day. You like the scarf, Karen, do you? It's a pretty color, isn't it? It's my favorite color. Well, actually, I really shouldn't say that because I have so many favorite colors. Do you have a favorite color? I do. Do you? Yes. I like blue, just like the sky here in this picture. You see that? Maybe you have a, more than one favorite color, do you? Do you? Can you, can you name a color that you love? Well, that's okay, sweetheart. You, you keep this book, and then maybe later you'll show me the pictures that you like the best, yeah? Okay. It was nice to meet you, Karen. I hope I see you again very soon. Okay. I'll be back in a little while, all right? <laughs> Look at the book. Bye-bye. What do you think? I think she is traumatized. It's smart of you not to send her home so quickly. Yeah, I sense that. How? Well, the selection was kind of slim, so I got you a good old burger and, uh, what do you call it, uh, chips? <laughs> yeah, french fries. Um, I, I can't eat this with you. I'm gonna go to my office and make some calls. I'm gonna figure out a legitimate way to keep her in the hospital. Good. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Just Let me know, all right? Yes, I will. Okay. I will call you. Thanks. How's the kid? Same. How's our friend? Same. <laughs> She's so guarded. You know, so fascinating to me. She wants so much to help this little girl have a breakthrough, and yet she's terrified to have one herself. I wish she would let you help her. She will, I hope, when she's ready. Okay, well, maybe she's not ready for a therapist, but she could use a friend. You know that I'm here in Pine Valley on my own kind of business. And as long as I'm here, I will do anything to help Alex. There is something I would like to ask you, though. True. Are your... your concerns for her right now, are they only as a brother-in-law or... something else going on here? I thought you'd gone for the evening. Well, let's just say I had a change of plans. 
My dinner from hell ended early. Oh. Well, since you're here, I was going to talk to the cardiologist on call about a consult. But actually, you'd be much better. I should hope so. Who was your patient? A little girl, Karen. She suddenly stopped speaking. And I can't find any neurological or physical reason for it. What about psychological trauma? Yeah, more than likely. That's what the social worker thinks, too. I'd be happy to assist you, but why do you need a cardiologist? We're trying to keep her out of the home until we can figure out the cause of the trauma. And her medical history indicates that she had a heart murmur, so I was thinking that could buy us some time. Is that her chart? Yeah. Let me take a look at it. No problem. With her past history, I can keep her here for observation and tests. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. That wasn't so difficult now, was it? Isn't it refreshing to be able to work with one another without going at each other's throats? Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate the cooperation. But I'm not a complete idiot. What is that supposed to mean? I know what Erica did behind my back. I think it's disgusting. And I bet you had something to do with it. Is there something else going on? <laughs> uh, you know, Alex and I, we've, we've been through a lot together. Yes, I know and, that. Um, we weren't always friends. Which is, by the way, all that we are. All right. You know, I used to think she was kind of a nice princess. Uh, sort of cold. But she's not. She's... She's sort of fragile and she's... vulnerable. It's made me feel protective. So you just want to help her? Yeah, that's... Um... My brother. He asked that we look out for each other. So you're trying to honor your brother's wish. We're friends. Okay. Ed, I'm sorry. I, I'm making you feel defensive. You don't have to be. You can certainly have any feelings for Alex that you want. I, I just think you need to keep sort of an emotional distance right now. If we want her to open up, we need to give her time and space. That's all. had nothing to do with Erica's actions. Oh, really? You didn't make the suggestion to I her? didn't condone them. I didn't encourage them. In fact, I even asked her to stay out of our situation. Good. She promised she would back off. Like she promised she'd stay out of it in the beginning. It's over, all right? We have no intention of using your past against you. I won't ask you about your, your mental state, or why you pushed me down a flight of stairs, Jeffrey, any of it. As far as I'm concerned, it's your business. You keep your distance, and I will keep mine. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go check in on Karen. Make sure she isn't released to a hostile environment. Something upset you. What was it? Something in the room? Yeah. Well, that's it. I wasn't in there. I was somewhere else. What do you mean, somewhere else? I don't know. Another place. No, I don't know what's happening to me. Why don't you sit down and just tell me what happened? Well, I went into the room. And um, David was in there leaning over my patient, this little girl, Karen. And uh, I don't know, suddenly it was as if I wasn't there. It was really dark. 
and I don't know, I I was somewhere else. I felt really scared. Scared of what you saw? Or or what you believed you saw? Both, I think. Okay, okay. All right. Um, so you walk into the room and you see Dr. Hayward leaning over your patient. Yeah, but there was another man looking at me. Jeffrey? Well, I don't know, maybe. But there was something about his eyes. They were, they were piercing. Like he, I felt powerless. I felt like a little girl. Okay. Um, are you sure you don't recognize this guy? Yeah, I am. Okay, try to try to visualize him. What does he look like? Does he look like Edward? No, he's older. Gray hair. There's something in his manner, though, that his eyes may be. I'm sorry. Um, I'll get right off. Yeah, Edmund Gray. Yeah, hi, Peggy. Listen, I'm in the hospital. I can't talk on this phone. Um, okay. Okay. All right, bring her, bring her to the phone in my room and I'll call you right back, okay? Good, thanks. Uh, that was my daughter, Maddie. She had a bad dream. Um, I'm gonna call her back. I'm gonna calm her down. I'll be right back, okay? You be all right? Yes, yeah. Send her my love, right? I will. but overhear some of what you were telling Edmund. You could have if you'd walked away. I just finished my examination with Karen. This is very troubling, Alex. That I remind you of this person that obviously triggers some painful episodes oh, please, from don't your past. No, wait, 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 no, 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 wait, wait, please. Just, what am I doing that's causing you to associate me with this man? Let it go. Well, I must be doing something, right? Alex, come on, let me help you. She said let it go, Hayward. Edmund, I'm just trying to help, all right? I have a valid reason to be concerned here. Bully, you're trying to get rid of her so you can run the Andrashti Foundation base? That is a completely unfounded accusation. Oh, really? What about Erica digging into her That past? had nothing to do with me, and you know it. Do I look as stupid as you sound? Well, now I know that you exactly You know what? I don't want to see him. Please, please, let's just get out of here. My, my, Alex. Unraveling before our very eyes. It's quite a sight. 